The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Quirky Dog Podcast, inspired by some of the quirkiest dogs you can ever imagine and the owners who love them. This podcast is brought to you by the quirky couple themselves, Scott and Jess Williams. Their aim is to educate and entertain. Here's Scott and Jess. Welcome, guys, and happy Wednesday. Today, we are going to have one of my all-time favorite guests on. I am super excited about this episode. The episode title is The Wonder of the Whippet with Alex Stein. But first, we're going to start with the quirky tip of the day. All right, if you guys are not familiar with the Whippet, Ashley Whippet, specifically, I want you to check out this book, and Alex can elaborate on this a little bit more, but you can find it at dtworld.com. All you have to do is go to the search bar and type in Ashley. It's listed there for $5. Irv Lander, who is an incredibly important person in the sport of disc, Alex is holding it up right here. If you guys are not familiar with Ashley Whippet and you have not seen this book before, please consider going and supporting DT World and purchasing it. You're going to learn even more than you've heard about on today's podcast. Alex is so kindly holding it up and showing you the back right now. Alex, welcome so much. If you were not around, we would not have the sport of disc today. So thank you for what you've done for us. Oh, well, thank you for having me. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the history, about this whole situation with Dodger Stadium and everything else. We only have 30 minutes or so together, so I might have to cap you off. But tell our listeners and our viewers uh, kind of how this all began and how Irv got intertwined and everything else. All right. So I got Ashley from my g- girlfriend was a Whippet breeder in 1971. There was a litter that was born, okay, in the college town. And she said to me, Alex, which one of those dogs do you want for yourself? And I go, oh, I'll take that little black and white runt of the litter, you know? And then she she asked me, "Uh, well, what are you going to name him? And I go, I got to pick out a name this fast. And then I, and, and everybody there was smoking cigars. Oh, there you go. Okay? It's perfect. Yeah. And smoking cigarettes. And there, I looked in an ashtray and I saw these ashes in it. And, and the ashes were black and white, the same color of, a, of Ashley. And I go, Ash, Ash, Ashley. And then I, I came up with the word Ashley. But years later, I added the word whippet because nobody knew what a whippet was. They yeah. would, people would see him on the, uh, uh, you know, walking on the leash and they would go, why is your dog so skinny? I go, that's the breed. It's a whippet. It's like a miniature greyhound. Okay. So anyway, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I started to play Frisbee on the college campus. Did you do human okay. stuff before? Were you doing like ultimate before or you were just? No, okay. never was. Okay. Just playing Frisbee with my friend back and forth and had a Frisbee in my house. I live with nine guys. So I actually, when I got him as a three week old puppy, I looked for a dog food dish in the cupboard and I couldn't find anything other than a dish that my fellow roommates were going to eat out of. And I go, I can't use that as a dog food bowl. And then I looked at a Frisbee and I flipped it upside down and I go, oh, my God, this would be perfect. <laughs> so I would, I, you know, made his, put his pablum in it. And uh, I, after he would finish eating, I would slide it on the hardwood floor and he would kind of run after it and like you know his brain would probably hey uh, dad i gotta eat tomorrow why do we why are you throwing my you know my dog food dish away all right so anyway i love I, the I, ash I, the ash and the disc <clears throat> eating out of it alone are great stories that i haven't heard so this is great i love it oh yeah that's how i start i tell people that to use it as a water dish and you know and that's and then play play keep away hold it hold it up high in the air and yeah you know the dog gets you know crazy yeah so you were torturing acclimated to, <laughs> torturing to, what a, to what a frisbee is. so anyway <laughs> in uh, uh 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 it started to get cold 
when he was like six months old in college. I dropped out of college at Ohio State University. I know you're a big Michigan fan. Yeah, we don't have to get into Big Ten politics here. Yeah, but yeah, we don't go, do go that. blue. I'll go I'll, Buckeyes. I'll, yeah. Go Buckeyes. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I I got in my car and I drove to Florida and I rented an apartment above a garage with my girlfriend for two hundred and fifty dollars a month. It was like it was like a hundred and fifty yards to 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 the beach. Uh-huh. So every day in the morning, I'd you know, ten o'clock, I would take Ashley to the beach and throw frisbee to him. Uh-huh. And you know, he already knew how to do, catch it and jump. And I would hang a frisbee from a tree, and he would jump eight feet off the ground when he was six months old. So he was hungry. So I played with him <laughs> on the beach, you know, four or five times a day, you know, and. And, you know, he would get tired and he would drop the Frisbee and go in the Atlantic Ocean and and cool off and then come back to me with the Frisbee and start barking. And I would get up and have to throw it again. And, you know, people would hear this dog barking all the time and they would create like a circle around me. And like, why is this dog barking? And meantime, back then, I should have taken a frisbee upside down and passed it around and got money put in it. (laughs) But I I, I tell that story, but I didn't do that. So anyway, the dog from run Ashley from running on the sand, his back hind muscles got so strong, like Mike Tyson's rocks, you know, from running on the sand. So, you know, uh, uh, and then I would take him to a grassy surface and he could literally jump another foot off the ground because the sand would give and, you know, on a grassy surface, yeah, he, had he better traction. nine feet yeah. off the ground. Yeah. And that so was without, just, this wasn't vaulting. This was just the dog's natural athletic ability just from na- ground right. to, yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And he only, you know, he, w- he weighed 28 pounds, to 21 inches at the shoulder, just all, his back hind legs were so muscular from running on the sand for for six months. So finally, my brain said, you know what? I got to go out to Hollywood to get discovered. Yep. Okay. So I got in my car and I drove out, I drove out to California. Okay. And I knocked on the doors of like William Morris agency. I not, I went to Whammo manufacturing company and I go, I got, you know, I said to the receptionist, I go, Hey, can you bring the, 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 you know, your supervisors out? I want to show them this great Frisbee dog that I have. And they all came out and they, they watched my little six minute performance on their grassy area. And they, and they go, wow, that dog's pretty athletic. I go, well, what do you think? Do you want to, you know, want to sign me? I'm ready. I'm ready to go do a commercial (laughs) for whammo to sell Frisbees. And they go, no, but you know what? Can we have that Frisbee for our trophy case? <laughs> and I'm going, well, what am I going to get in return? Yeah. And he goes inside and they bring bring me four brand new, back then, Super Pro Frisbees. Oh, nice. You know, okay. I, go, I go, that's it? <laughs> and they go, yeah, we, you know. Worth, you know, the, um, worth bye, the trip. I wave, <laughs> bye bye, and I, you know, I left. And, this is everyone's you know, journey in Hollywood. This is what it's like. You go so, out. This is a real journey. You go out, and you're, it's just not instant success. Right. I got door slammed. I called other other agents, and they would. You have a what that catches a what that jumps how high? <laughs> and they would hang up the phone on me. And I, so I, anyway, I'm driving down the LA freeway one day, and I'm listening on a Sunday night. And I'm listening to Vin Scully doing a Dodger game. And he goes, Hey, if anybody's interested, the big red machine of the Cincinnati Reds. And back then the Cincinnati Reds and the Dodgers were, were a a rivalry. He says, there's still tickets available for, for, you know, Monday night game. And I, and I, and I just, a light bulb lit up in my head. And I said, that's it. I'm going to go drive to the stadium. I'm going to leave my dog in the car because it's a 68 degree and a, a balmy evening you know, at, at, in, 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 in uh, uh, Chavez Ravine Stadium. And I got a ticket, went into the stadium and, and, you know, looked around and, you know, I go, oh, I think I can jump over this little retaining wall right there. And I sat down and then, you know, after the seventh inning stretch, I went out to the car. I got Ashley. Okay, the windows were cracked, so he was fine. Yep. I took off my shoes. 
because I was a beach bum and I could run faster barefoot <laughs> than I could with my shoes on. Yep. So I, I walk in the stadium and Ashley's right behind me and the security guard goes, hey, is that your dog? I go, what dog? And I and he pointed down there and I looked. I go, ah, I've never seen that dog before in my life. So he grabs him from the, the, his collar and he shoes him back out in the parking lot. Uh-huh. All right. And I grab a seat right up on the on, on the on the on the top. And you know, Ashley was so trained to me, heel trained, that all of a sudden, three minutes later, I turn around. And he's right next to me, and I put him underneath my seat. Okay. Okay, and I waited for the warm-up pitcher to throw four warm-up throws, knowing that after seven, the live TV cameras would be back. And I walked down 26 steps. I jumped over a little three-foot little wooden retaining, you know, little fence that they had right going onto the field. Yeah, we call I that threw the security. Frisbee over. I threw the Frisbee you know, over the, over that little fence and threw it 50, 60 yards and actually jumped. The crowd started to scream and go crazy. And then I jumped over and then I threw 90 yards back then. I could throw 90 yards and, and Ashley could twist and contort his body like Barishnikov and, you know, in, in midair, you know, and he would, you know, catch the Frisbee and run it right back. I, I throw it and, the, you know, the, 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 the fans, the 55,000 people just went crazy. And I only expected to get maybe three, four throws off before security was going to come on the field. Yeah. And then I'm saying to myself, well, how are they going to get a do- chase a dog that's running 35 miles an hour? You know, how are they going to, what are they going to pick him up and <laughs> carry him off the stadium? I go, that would be inhumane yeah. for an animal. And, and then I, Later, I thought that the, the secure the VIP guys, security upstairs, said, "You know what? It's so interesting. The crowd's loving it." Okay, there was a grand slam home run hit in the sixth inning, and Ashley's crowd was louder than when the Dodgers got hit a grand slam home run. Unbelievable! Okay, to lead the game six yeah. to three. So. So I'm still out there. I'm, I asked the center fielder. I go, hey, you want to throw the frisbee to, to Ashley? He goes, oh no, and he, and and he he said, oh, I'll get fined by the Dodgers. I can't do that. And finally, after um, you know, after the police report read eight minutes, <laughs> I said, okay, I got a time to leave. And I I walked up the same steps that I came down on, and up on top were were five security guards and they zip tied me and they took me out in the parking lot and threw me in the back of a pickup truck and drove me around the Dodger stadium holding tank. And they put me in this little jail cell with a bunch of drunks that were, it, that were, it got in fights in the bleachers. And there were also p- people in the holding tank that they they caught stealing eight track cassettes in the parking lot. Yeah, so, so that, you were amongst, I mean, August, amongst good company. August fifth, nineteen seventy four. That's yeah. what people, you know, that's, that's what, what people did. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I'm in I'm in the jail cell, and the guy, you know, and five minutes later, security, hey, you with the dog, come over here, and he. Where I, was I, where I, was both. Ashley when you were in the jail cell? Where was Ashley? Ashley was. Still on the feet. Well, signing autographs. When I ran up the steps, the people in the in the in the in the aisle seats went into the steps and and wanted to see what was going to happen to me, and they blocked Ashley okay. from going up the steps. Okay. So a, a nineteen-year-old kid took his belt off and reached over and. Picked up Ashley, put the belt around his three-inch beautiful leather collar I had for him, and he took him home after the game, which three days later, I got him back. Okay, perfect. All right. But he was accounted for. He was accounted for. Yeah. That's the story with Ashley. So anyway, when I'm in the jail cell, you with the dog, come over here. He hands me a business card, and on top of the business card has the L.A. Rams NFL logo on it. And his name and underneath his name says 
halftime coordinator. And I just gave like a, a fist bump. I go, yes. And then he said on the back of the card, he wrote, call me when you get out of jail. OK, so I called him. He told me, you know, he lo- he was sitting in the in the stands and he loved it. He said this would be a great halftime show for for for, you know, for the, the, the L.A. Rams and the 90,000 seat L.A. Coliseum. Yep. And th- two weeks later, when I got, got Ashley back, there was a, 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 a there was a football game, a preseason football game that I did. And um, <clears throat> I was on the field for, you know, six, seven minutes. And Ashley ran 80, 90 yards, jumped in the air to 90,000 people, went crazy. And finally, the guy that hired me, he says, OK, it's time to get off the field now. So I, I, I walk off the field. And Ashley starts to follow me, but then he makes a turn towards the goalpost. Okay. Okay. And he walks over to the goalpost. Sorry to say this, everybody, but he lifted his leg <laughs> and he urinated <laughs> on, on the, field. the goalpost. And the 90,000 people just screaming, yelling, what? <laughs> this is incredible. You know, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So then I, so then I said, come on, Ashley, get over here. And then I, you know, I walked up, you know, I walked up, you know, the, the ramp where my car was parked and, and the guy said, great job. I want you to come back and do this many, many times. Did he keep and peeing on the goalpost or you kind of exercised him before the routine in the future? Was the goalpost pee a one-time situation? No, uh, no actually the, the goalpost back then had the LA Rams logo on one of the goalposts and on the other goalpost had the the um, opposing team opposing team and i finished my frisbee <laughs> you know routine at halftime and i would move them over to the opposing <laughs> team's uh, 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 you know, name. So it was part of it was part of your show. It, it was part he of your show. He would lift his leg and pee on the opposing name team's name, and the crowd even screamed louder. He goes, "That's unbelievable that the dog would would do that." All right. So, anyway. so tell me how Irv gets involved here. So anyway, Irv. Okay, a, he was in the stands also watching the game. The game that you got arrested. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, the game I got arrested at Dodger Stadium, and he um, he saw this and he goes, "Oh my God!" Because he was in charge of the hula hoop world championships and you know doing that in all park and recreation departments and Dunkin' Yo Yo championships and and he you know he said, "Oh, this would possibly make a great you know." competition all across the country for for dogs and teaching them how to play frisbee and blah 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 and so and then you know Irv was still wor- was working at Whammo and I went to see him actually he Irv bailed me out of jail okay he ba- all right I, he, Here's the tie he gave me well they let me out on my own recognizance in, in Dodger Stadium but well they took me to LA you know jail yeah but you weren't and, a thief uh, and you weren't a drunk you know, and yeah. you know they gave me a a, a 30-day pass i got to come back in 30 days and pay a 250 dollar fine for trespassing on a private business okay so 30 days i went back i didn't have the money okay i the the, the check from whammo okay was made out to me okay and then when I went and took it to the cashier, at, at, you know, at, 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 in, 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 you know, in, in, in the, in the L.A., um, you know, prison, not the prison, sorry, the, the county LA jail, the county jail, yeah, it's you know, the, familiar with all this, t- the courtroom, <laughs> you can courtroom, fill in the blanks, <laughs> they wouldn't take the check because it was a three party check. It was made out to, to you me. and yeah, and they needed it to them. Yeah. And they needed it to be made out to them, and they go and she clicks on it. She stamps on my, you know, my 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 arrest papers, and and gave me another thirty day continuance. And I go to my bank, 
where I, you know, where I lived up in the mountains uh, of Sierra Madre, California. And I went to my bank and I, I handed it to the cashier and she gave me $250 in cash. And I go, well, heck, I got to, I don't have any money. I can, I got to live off. I got to live off this. And I, I w- literally, I went back six different times to the judge. Okay. Okay. The sixth time he says to me, you're still here with the dog. You haven't paid your fine yet. And he goes, by the way, what kind of dog food does your dog eat? I go, oh my God, am I, you know, you know, am I, you're, you're asking me, for a sponsorship, what kind of dog m- food my dog eats? And I just kind of said to him, and he and he kind of points his finger at me. He goes, "Son, if you don't come up with that money, I'm going to put you in, in jail for 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 the a three day weekend." And I go, "Okay." I walked out. I called my mother in Ohio. Yeah. And she she, you know, wired me the two hundred and fifty dollars. I go back. Okay, to the judge, and and he goes, he goes, okay, and he and he stamps, and he goes, I'm reducing your fine to to one hundred dollars. Oh, great! So I go, good. I go, great. So I went and paid, and you know that was that did, was the end. How of that did the dog food thing tie six. in? Did he just want a dog food recommendation for his own dog, or why do you think he asked about the dog food? Yeah. I, I I don't know. I think he just it just was he was curious what kind of dog food the dog ate. Okay. And then of course you sent anyway. the hundred and fifty back to your mom, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I know. Western Union. Western <laughs> Union. So um yeah, so that's so that's you know, the that's start of all of it. Working. And Irv Irv saw the beauty in what was going on on the field, and he was the founder of the sport that is today that so many people compete at, around the world in. Right, but um, in 1974, in in the end of August, okay, mm-hmm. I did it on August 5th. Okay, at the end of August, there was at the there was a the World Frisbee Championships at the Rose Bowl yep. with humans. Yep. Okay, and he goes, Irv goes, well, why don't come come do a, a you know a little show, you know, come do a, a like a halftime show at 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 the you know the World Frisbee Championships, and I I went out there and I you know and I I threw, and then there was a you know a human that. <clears throat> Uh, Irv said, you know what, have him throw it to Ashley. And I held Ashley on the goal line. And this guy threw it like 106 yards. Okay. And Ashley ran after it and jumped in the air and caught it. Okay. So that, and and then Irv claimed that it was a Guinness Book of World Records for a a dog. I mean, back then there were no. It was the only one. (laughs) That was was the first, first, first guy. Ashley Whippet was the first Frisbee dog. Yeah. I mean, there were other dogs, I'm sure, that played frisbee, you know, in the backyard. Yeah. But I was, they I, weren't getting arrested. I was the <laughs> one that that showed it to the world. Yeah, you were committed. So yeah. then, so then, this human situation just brought more um, inspiration but, to the sport. It, like, the, talk about how all that developed then to where we got on the right. field well, today. So then, Irv decided, you know, in the beginning of 1970, 1975, to have have a have frisbee dogs in in some of the same uh park Sir. and recreation departments that his his hula hoop championship was and his yo-yo champion and his junior frisbee championship was so anyway these dogs showed up and they qualified nine of them qualified for the, for the world finals and uh I think Irv got uh, Cycle Dog Food as a sponsor okay. that year. Yep. And, uh, uh, you know, I was already, you know, involved in it. So I competed against these other nine dogs. And, you know, Ash, they, they had the, they had a, 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 a two sections, a, a, a toss and catch section with a, a circle and then another circle 15 yards around that. And if your dog caught it up in the air, he got two points. If he caught it down on the ground, he got one point. And then there was a freestyle event, okay, that he had some of the frisbee throwers, at humans as as um, as judges, and they judged, you know, all the dogs. And and Ashley 
came in first place. So he won in 1975, 1976, and 1977. So okay. he won three so years he, in a those, row. Those first world championships, you were the first winner of those yeah. the first three years. Were, were right. there any other three dogs in involved? There were eight right. or nine dogs. Now stop it. The sport and was then growing. They, they ask me, they go, you know what, Alex? Why don't you retire from the sport? Yep. And we'll rename the competition the Ashley Whippet Invitational. Okay. And you can tour the country and be a judge. You could do television shows. You know, I I I was on the White House lawn. Yep. I taught Amy Carter's dog how to play frisbee. Yep. Uh, you know, you finally I did, hit. You, know, you finally hit your stardom that you went out to I, Hollywood to find. You finally. That's hit how it started. Yeah. Irv and I traveled. About eighty thousand miles a year cr- cross country yep. on a plane to New York, and then back to L.A., and then back to like Baltimore, where the regional was a month later. And you know, yeah. So you, you know, had you had the life that you wanted to create. So from cycle, yeah. it was probably like come and get it, Frisky's Alpo Gain. is that kind of health games was Gains, in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. come and get it, and like fris- Friskies and Alpo. That's kind of how all that progressed. Yeah, the those part. were the sponsors that yeah. you know Irv got, and the, and those dog food companies had had like a, a an agency uh, that was an advertising agency, and they booked all these TV shows for us. Okay. Okay. So the thing, sponsors you know, had a Ma- big the sponsors had a big role in that, and I just want to point to yeah. that era of disc that. Everybody that won would get, you know, sponsor bags filled with dog food. The trip to Washington D.C. at the time was fully paid for. Like it was, was it was for- a whole, it was a whole event. It was really awesome. The World Finals was right at the Washington Monument. It was every right. single year. It was it was really special to be a part of all of that. And not yeah, that it isn't there, now, but back in the day, that was the only dollar, game in town. A thousand dollar prize yeah. to, the, to the winner. Yeah, completely. And I do want to say also, for those of you listening who aren't familiar, people actually get paid to go and perform on these halftime courts now and on these fields and everything. They don't have to break in. But Alex also started that and showed the popularity of how much the crowds really do enjoy the dogs. And everybody who's done halftime before knows that those long throws get everybody rocking and rolling. So you were the first one that kind of initiated that in canine entertainment as well. Um, that, that. So, so when do you remember crossing paths with me? Because I feel like it was pretty, it was a pretty long time ago at this point. Yeah, it was a pretty long time ago, <laughs> Jessica. Uh, we did, we did 60 I, years ago. So now let's cut it the half-life of that. So I, uh, when, when, what's your first memory? And then I'll point to I that a little think bit. I, well, I met you at a world finals. You qualified for a world finals. Yeah. Well, I, I think sure. when I first went, pull up this uh, picture for me, Christy, the young picture. So I have checks here from Irv Lander from 96 and 97 because I went okay. out with um, Tom and Chris Worley with their daughter, okay. Vicky, and I went to the world finals and I would clean up discs with Vicky. We were like the girls in between that wore the, the patriotic hats and we would clean up the Frisbees so the competitors wouldn't have to do it and everything else. So literally this first check is written... Um, signed from Irv. The second one was Christine Walker. But in 96 and 97, I was cleaning up discs. But I was competing. um, I competed in my first regional when I was seven for Friskies. And then at Alpo, I remember very vividly, I used Girls Uh Just Want to Have Fun. I was like 12. And I switched to another song the following year. And you came up to me after that regional and you said... I really want you to go back to that song, Girls Just Want to Have Fun. You said, that, that, that's what was missing. You said, that's what yeah. we need. And I remember that being one of my first very poignant yeah. memories of you and my career and everything else. So I have yeah. to thank you for no, that. No, that was great. Yeah, yeah. That but a great. lot I has happened. Your... Go ahead. What's what were you going to say? What were you going to say? No, what was the name of your dog? Zoe. Zoe. Yeah. My young dog, my, my dog at that time was Zoe that we did Girls Just Want to Have Fun with. And I didn't make it to the World Finals until 2002. It took me a while to get there. But I just very vividly remember, I don't know if you were okay. judging that year or yet what, but you came up to me and you said, you know, you did a great job. You keep getting better, but you really need to go back to that song. And <laughs> that song was our right. song forever. I'm so I appreciate that. I'm glad you got that. a good memory, a memory for that. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was poignant advice. Uh, so, she's a, she's yeah. a lot younger than us, Alex. That's, that's why she <laughs> yeah. can <remember>. uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so going into modern day, I just want to point to this a little bit because I just got the honor and privilege to see the Ashley Whippet Museum, um, who Tom Worley was a huge mentor of mine growing up. Him and Alex right. are the ones that run the Ashley Whippet 
Whip and Invitational event right now, which is a current day event. So Chrissy, if you could pull up the museum yeah. picture, I just want people to realize that there's an actual physical museum that contains a ton of history in the sport of disc and Frisbee and a ton of Ashley stuff too. I mean, the stuff there was just incredible. So that's in Naperville, Illinois for oh, anyone yeah. interested, whoever is Lander passing Cup through. And the Lander Cup too. When, yes. when Irv passed, we, the, the, the champion every year... Their name got put on the Lander Cup. Well, yeah. it started back in seven. My name was on the f first three years, 75, 76, and 77. And, you know, the Lander Cup is like the Stanley Cup of canine frisbee. Yeah, no, I know. So, and that that's in there too. And the museum was just amazing. And Tom loves to yeah. show everything off, but it was, it was just really cool to see everything in person and it's internationally renowned. I mean, people have been there from all walks of life to go and I, see the new museum. Oh yeah. From Japan and China and, you know, you know, all the countries that come and compete now in Naperville where the world finals are. Yeah. You know, we, I mean, we used to have them, you know, in LA and, and, uh, and I don't even remember where, you know, uh, on, on the Washington, on the Washington monument, on the Smithsonian lawn yep. in Washington, DC for 10 years, we had it there. And now your event, you and Tom run the event for the most part. I know event. you have a lot of help. Yeah. Um, and it's the Labor Day weekend, correct? And it's always in cool. Illinois. Right. Yeah. It's, it's in Naperville, Illinois, right outside of Chicago. Yep. And that's where the museum is. And there's qualifiers for that event or can people just show up for that yeah. weekend and compete? How does yeah, that work? Well, there's qualifiers. There's, there's 14 regionals that we have across the country and the top uh, f four dogs that, that, uh, uh, that, that came in the, you know, top places get a, get, get an invite, uh, yeah, get invited to yep. the, the world finals. Yep. They're qu already qualified. And then Labor Day on, you know, on Labor Day weekend, we have a last chance qualifier. Okay. So on Saturday, the day before, you know, Sunday mm -hmm. is last chance qualifier. So you can just show up and, and, and compete and the top four dogs on that day or the top 15 dogs, I think, on that day. I don't know. I, you'd have to ask Tom Worley about it. <laughs> that part is You're, is just, the, you're just the figurehead. <laughs> Those top top 15 dogs get go, go on to Sunday's fi final event. Yeah, so. no, and, and it's and it's awesome. So anyone, anyone interested in the sport knows about this event, but I just wanted to bring light to that, that that's something that's happening in modern day. So what is yeah. your favorite thing about the sport of disc today in 2023 what's your favorite thing about it my favorite thing that uh, well i see it's a it's a growing sport and i see all these clubs that do halftime shows and 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 uh state fairs and and you know there's like six people that travel around the country in motorhomes with their dogs that's you know, closer that, to 60 probably you know, at this point, but yes. Just, <laughs> yeah. just, just do shows yep. everywhere, yep. like, you know, canines in flight and, yep. you know, and rescue, you know, he, he announces, uh, you know, go to an animal shelter and, you know, yep. rescue a dog. Yep. So, so yeah, so that, so you know, the growth, that, that, your favorite you know, part, good, your favorite part of the current day sport is the growth of where it started at Dodger stadium to where it is today. Correct. Yes. Okay. What's your What's your least favorite thing? What would you like to see improve most in our sport today? Um, you can answer however you want. I didn't prep you, but what would you What Where Where do you see the most improvement? What, what would you like to see as far as a future vision that we could head towards? Well, I would like to see a documentary, either on Netflix or or you know Amazon, whatever. The, of the history of Ashley Whippet, okay. because coming up, it's going to be his 50th year anniversary. Okay. August 5th, 2024. Okay. It's almost and a year I'd away. Love exactly. To see, yeah. I mean, there are all these documentaries on TV that you're seeing. I want everybody to, to see with their children watching TV. What, how Frisbee dog started. Yeah. 
Well, and the cool thing today, and this is part of the reason I wanted to have you on, is whippets are really intense athletes still today. They're competing at a very high level in dock diving. They're still competing in disc. Um, You know, some people have them in agility and everything else. They're making these crosses like border whippets and stuff. They're they're really popular today. So it might even be cool to have a cameo of a black and white whippet or even a border whippet that has similar markings to Ashley kind of playing a present day Ashley just to float that out there too because you have great footage and you have a ton of stuff, but these dogs are incredible athletes and they I have know. been since 1970. I know. Well, I'm also going to contact the, the LA Dodgers and I'm going to say, hey, my 50th anniversary is coming up. Can I, will you invite me to throw out the first Frisbee or the first pitch or something and, and on the Jumbotron show some videos that I have of, you know, what happened 50 years ago? And, and you know, I, you know, I'm kind of a, wild guy and if they say no to that <laughs> all right let's I'm gonna not, sneak listen. back on the yeah stadium. you don't want to be back in jail yeah, again. let's not let's not tell them <laughs> back to jail. this is intent yeah, this I is public that, the, the crowd or i'll say wait a second didn't this happen 50 years ago why well, is this i would doing i would team again? up i would team up with someone um on the road that is has one of the dogs too you don't you're not they're gonna get they're gonna invite you back but i do want to publicly make it known that this is alex's wish that he would like a very public very well-known documentary and i think netflix or prime would be great and i mean you're a very entertaining person playing a young <laughs> alex in a film would be very fun for any actor a young alex yeah. yeah i have a quick question uh, is yes. there any of the footage the original footage of you out there on youtube YouTube or anywhere where you were in that because it was televised it would be cool if we could find some of that old footage I, too yeah you know I've contacted the Dodgers and and uh they they have it you know down in their basement I guess in the vault and yeah. they wanted seven thousand dollars for it right and I go well back then I go well, that's a lot of money and I want to see the video first before I, I want to buy it and then another uh, 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 another person like you asked me about it, and he contacted the Dodgers about the video, and they go, "Oh yeah, it's fifteen thousand dollars." Well, so the there's, price kept there's, on going there's up inflation, and up and up. Alex, and yeah. you but, sold but, a lot of sandwiches back in the day. We may be able to get it still. I, you, you never know. I don't know. Between that and a GoFundMe, but there's the pictures. Other thing, there's pictures the other thing, of it. Monday, I looked at the calendar. And Monday, August 5th, 2024, is, is a Monday night also. Okay, perfect. So, and, but I, I, they haven't released the baseball schedule yet. So yeah, can so you imagine if the Dodgers played on that night? It's full schedule. Well, we don't want to see you get anyway. tased. <laughs> That's a no, dream. they're going to they're going to invite you back and, and I I got a lot of California connections too. I uh, we can make this happen for you, but I do want to put out there for anyone watching, okay. especially with any film connections, this documentary I think is a great idea. The Ashley Whippet documentary. Yeah. You still got a few good years left right. in you and it is important to spread this story because this one dog has created just a lifetime right. of happiness internationally, worldwide. It's been amazing. Right. Well, there was also a movie uh, a, sh- a short film called Fl- Floating Free, mm-hmm. which was nominated for an Academy Award for a, a live action short film. OK, and it didn't win. I think they said it came in second place. But I mean, it's all over YouTube. You can, you know, you know, Google, you know, Floating Free. Yeah. And Ashley is probably... 60% of that 12 minute video. Okay. So there we go. So you got your foot in the door, but you just want a little bit more. All right. One right. last thing I want to say, because it's you and Tom really kind of running the deal here with AWI. What do you have yeah. to say as far as your friendship and your relationship with Tom? What would you say out there to him publicly? Cause I mean, I can't thank both of you enough for what you've done for me in my lifetime, but what would you have to say yeah. to Tom here publicly? Well, Tom is like a brother to me, okay? Yep. We, uh, you know, we've known each other for, I don't know, since, since 80, probably, well, probably going on 45 years now. And, uh, you know, for him to start the Ashley Whippet Museum in his, in his basement, I mean, he moved from one house with stuff all over, cluttered everywhere, and then he built a brand new million dollar house and in his basement, as the Ashley Whippet Museum with a sign, 
you walk in, the, the, you know, his door through the garage, you go down the basement, there's the Ashley Whipping Museum, a wooden sign that's there. And, and I've given him so much stuff. You yeah. Know, oh, his garage his, is packed with what you sent him from Vermont. It's packed. I know. He's got <laughs> like 60,000 artifacts of canine <laughs> Frisbee. They send Frisbees all over Europe, Japan. They send him T-shirts yeah, and, know. you know, all kinds of things. So, yeah, but Tom and I, we, we, we talk you know, two, sometimes two, three times a week. And, you know, we want to, you know, organize like we're looking for an, uh, uh, judges this year. We're yep. a, a one judge short. So just so, Scott, if you're not doing anything, <laughs> oh, come you know, to Naperville, you could yeah. be you could be one of our judges. <laughs> as long as I can smoke a cigar yeah. while I'm doing it. <laughs> I love how you got the invite. No. So you guys are looking for a judge for this year's competition. And yeah, you saying, Tom, being like a brother to you. I, I just wanted to point that out publicly. I mean, you guys are yeah, very and his close. Family, and all his all his grandkids yeah. call me Uncle Alex yep. every time yep. I go to Naperville and I. Stay in his house yeah. instead of a hotel. Chris I, is very you know, gracious. Chris is a very Chris gracious. Yeah, she's very gracious to have you come. <laughs> she's she's a very gracious oh, yeah. host. She's a very gracious host. Well, you guys really, I mean, you specifically, but you and Irv and Tom, I mean, I know a lot of people, there are a lot of cogs in the wheel to get this thing going, but it really is incredible yeah. what we have here today in present day. Is there anything else we missed or right. that you'd like to touch on? Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, his name is Eldon McIntyre. I know Eldon okay. very well. Yep. He was like the second person other than me to run the sport with his dog, Hyper Hank. Yep. Okay. Him and I actually, he went and did a competition for this radio show. And, you know, uh, uh, a month after I snuck on Dodger Stadium and I went there to sign up, you know, to, to, to be in this competition. And they go, oh, no you're a professional. You can't be in, in the competition. And I go, what? Yeah. What do you mean I'm a professional? And I see these 12 people carrying, you know, 50 pound bags of dog food after the competition. And I'm like standing there. I go, how could I, they not invite me to, <laughs> to compete? You know, it was, it was, you know, it was down in at, at the state, you know, in the Rose Bowl near there. Anyway. So anyway, Eldon and I, we traveled for Years and years promoting it also. Okay, Eldon with his dog Hyper Hank. I'm not sure he won a world championship, but him and I traveled. We did Super Bowl 12 halftime show, Eldon yep. and I. That's awesome. All right. Those halftime first, shows have changed first a little. Animal <laughs> act, first animal act ever to be on the halftime show of – a Super Bowl game. Think about that. Yeah, that's amazing. That is amazing. No, Eldon, I'm glad that you brought Eldon up. Eldon is a very important cog in the wheel also. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure when you gave me the advice about changing my song up, Eldon was a judge that year too. I mean, there's a lot of foundational oh, yeah. people in the sport and you guys are still um, alive and well today and have your oh, yeah. cognizance about you enough to come on a podcast. So I'm glad we mentioned Eldon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Alex, it's been a pleasure. Um, I, I had a good laugh here with some of the stuff. I didn't, the ashes, the ashes is a good tie in with the cigars. What are you showing me? Yeah. Well, no, I want to show you. Oh boy. Here I want we to go. show you a picture of Ashley. Oh, I love this. Oh, there. Beautiful. There he is. Look, I love this. Very nice. It's like a shrine. That is actually done by, by, uh, Tom Worley's, uh, wife's mother drew that picture in like 1980, oh, beautiful. 1989. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah Chris's up, mom so. is still doing well, too. I just got the whole load on and everything. Well, I'm glad you showed us that. And I'm going to get, yeah, um, we're going to have some awesome pictures of Ashley in the thumbnail uh, of YouTube for this show and on the website. I'm going to get those from you afterwards. And if you guys want to learn more or if you just want to support this sport at all, please go to dtworld.com and order that book. You can just type Ashley into the search bar. The DT. book pops right up. It's dtworld.com. And while you're there, if you order 100 misprints, I think it's still 100 for $100. So get yourself, get yourself some discs as well or some food bowls, oh, whatever yeah. you want to call them. I, 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 discovering the world has the best fastbacks to teach your dog how to, how to, how to start the game. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's other companies that make Frisbees now, but I'm, I'm a believer in discovering the world, man. They yeah, started. They're, they're old they school. They're the OGs. And, they're, and, and the, uh, the um, disc for this year's AWI is on the front of the set. That's the logo for 2023. You're wearing it on the hat too, right? You got correct. it on your hat? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good. 
Alex, you did great. You were able to call in. Your sound was amazing. We so, so appreciate this. Uh, uh, the only thing I uh, wish is that you'd just come back to New England so we could hang out. We're in Maine. We're filming in New Hampshire. It'd be great if you're back in Vermont. We could just all hang out. It'd be awesome. All right. I, I will be up there next summer for sure. All right. Well, but before you, you before you head back to Dodger mm -hmm. Stadium, we'll have a good visit. <laughs> unless, unless I win the lottery tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> no, tonight. Okay, All right. Good, well, we, good we, to talk we, with we, you. We, we, we $1 million. Wish, we wish you the best $1 of luck. billion dollars. Sorry. $1 All billion. Right. Dollars. Thank you so, All so right, much to Alex. Thank, Thank you. you to Ashley. Thank you to the Sport love of ya. Disc. Love you too, Alex. It's so good to talk to you. And check out the Ashley Whip Museum. Right. And, and Ashley's book. I got it. You know that. All right. Back. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.